the constitution of india has adopted the british model of parliamentary form of government or the cabinet form of government in this form of government the prime minister with his council of minister has the real powers they form the real executive while the president has the nominal powers and is the nominal head so in india the prime minister being the head of the council of ministers has a variety of functions and powers so in this video we'll be talking about the powers of the prime minister along with the different positions of the prime minister that is what relations the prime minister has with other high dignitaries of the country so in this video we'll be talking about the positions of the prime minister that is what relation the prime minister has with the president with the cabinet with the parliament as the leader of the nation with his party and as the representative of the nation so let us start with the prime minister's position in accordance to that of the president now in india the parliamentary system has been adopted whereby there is a head of the state and a head of the government the president is the head of the state and the prime minister is the head of the government so whatever power has been vested in the president is actually exercised by the president on the advice of the council of ministers with the prime minister at its head so the constitution gives the prime minister the responsibility to inform the president regarding the affairs of the cabinet so the prime minister is the link between the cabinet and the president now we know that when a no confidence motion is passed in the lok sabha the president can remove the prime minister but in this the president does not really have a say of his own the president cannot remove the prime minister as long as he enjoys the confidence and support of the lok sabha so the prime minister is the leader of the party or the coalition which gets the majority support in the lok sabha until and unless the majority members of lok sabha lose their faith or trust in the prime minister and his party the prime minister will stay in his post now if a minister has taken a decision on some matter without consulting it with the council of ministers that is with the other ministers of the council the president can ask the prime minister to submit the matter for consideration of the council of ministers this is also one way that the president and the prime minister interact we also know that the president appoints certain high dignitaries in the country but again the power of the president is formal or nominal and the president is in reality advised by the council of ministers with the prime minister at its head so since the council of ministers is headed by the president and the council of ministers is responsible for advising the president the prime minister becomes the chief adviser of the president so as the leader of the cabinet the prime minister advises the president on the appointment of some high dignitaries of the country we already know who these high dignitaries are let's once again look at who these high dignitaries are the president with the advice of the prime minister appoints the attorney general of india the comptroller and auditor general of india the election commissioners members of the finance commission the chief election commissioner governor of a state ambassadors and judges of the supreme court and high courts the constitution says that the president shall appoint the prime minister and then the president shall appoint the council of ministers on the advice of the prime minister so the president gets to appoint the other ministers on the advice of the prime minister but since his powers are formal the prime minister actually chooses his own ministers from people of his party and allies who he thinks can work efficiently and act as a team in running the government of the country so the prime minister 
chooses his team of ministers and advises the president to appoint them as ministers. The prime minister can also ask the president or advise the president to remove a certain minister from his post. Now let us just quickly recap the relation between the prime minister of India and the president of India. So the president cannot remove the prime minister as long as he enjoys the confidence and support of the Lok Sabha. The prime minister is elected and kept in power only through the vote of the citizens of the country. Secondly, no single minister can unilaterally take any decision. So if a minister has taken a decision on some matter without consulting it with the council of ministers, the president can ask the prime minister to submit the matter for consideration of the council of ministers. Thirdly, the prime minister advises the president on the appointment of some high dignitaries of the country. And lastly, the prime minister chooses his team of ministers and advises the president to appoint them as ministers. So these ministers are chosen by the prime minister and appointed by the president of India. Now let us talk about the relation of the prime minister and the cabinet. The constitution says that the council of ministers shall be headed by the prime minister. The constitution also doesn't mention the limitation on the number of cabinet ministers, ministers of state and deputy ministers. It just says that the council of ministers should not exceed 15% of the strength of the Lok Sabha. So since the cabinet is the most important part of the council of ministers, the prime minister acts as the head of the cabinet as well. So the prime minister is the leader of the cabinet. And as such, the prime minister advises the president to appoint ministers and allocate work among them. So the prime minister chooses his own ministers and the president appoints them and allocates the work within these ministers. Secondly, the prime minister is the leader of the cabinet. If the prime minister resigns, the entire council of ministers will also have to resign. Since the Prime Minister is the head of the cabinet, the resignation of the Prime Minister is equal to the resignation of the entire Council of Ministers. The Prime Minister can also ask any minister to resign or advise the President to dismiss any minister. If a minister has done something wrong or has become corrupt and is not representing the spirit of the country, the Prime Minister might ask the President to remove this minister or ask the minister himself to resign. The Prime Minister is the ex officio chairman of the Council of Ministers. So, by being the ex officio chairman of the Council of Ministers, the Prime Minister presides over the meetings of the cabinet. He also decides the agenda of these meetings. In the cabinet meetings, the cabinet ministers and certain other ministers decide the policies of the government. And after these discussions regarding the policies, the Prime Minister gives his own conclusion, which is generally the decision of the cabinet. The Prime Minister also guides, directs, controls and coordinates the activities of the various departments. As we have already discussed before, there are various divisions and subdivisions in the government bodies. So there are many departments and ministries. All of these ministries have to come together to formulate the policies of the government. The Prime Minister, by virtue of being the leader of the cabinet, has to make sure that these departments are coordinated. So he guides, directs, controls and coordinates these various departments. Now, since all of these departments come together to formulate the policies of the government, the Prime Minister also has to coordinate the policies of the government. Now, let us recap the position of the Prime Minister with relation to the Cabinet. So, the Prime Minister advises the President to appoint ministers and allocate the work among them. Secondly, if the Prime Minister resigns, the entire Council of Ministers will also have to resign. 
thirdly the prime minister is the ex officio chairman of the council of ministers so he presides over the meetings of the cabinet fourthly the prime minister guides directs controls and coordinates the activities of the various departments now let us talk about the position of the prime minister inside the parliament the executive powers that are vested in the president are in reality exercised by the prime minister and his council of ministers but the prime minister also has a unique position in the parliament by virtue of this the president summons and prorogues the parliament and dissolves the lok sabha on the advice of the prime minister so the prime minister along with his council of ministers advises the president regarding the summoning and proroguing of the parliament and the dissolving of the lok sabha now let's see if you can answer this question who dissolves the lok sabha is it the president on advice of the prime minister the prime minister on advice of the president the vice president on advice of the prime minister or the vice president on advice of the president yes it is the president on advice of the prime minister we know that the prime minister is the head of the cabinet and by virtue of that in the parliament the prime minister becomes the representative of the government and represents the collective voice of the government when all the bills that have been formulated by the ministers are presented in the parliament the prime minister has to act as the principal spokesperson and defender of the government the prime minister makes all important announcements in the parliament regarding the national policies which are decided on by the council of ministers so the prime minister makes important announcements and defends the government in the parliament other than this there are various bills that are discussed in the parliament there are lengthy discussions and debates that go on sometimes there may be some sensitive issues that are being debated such as caste wars violence or reservations during such circumstances the prime minister might have to intervene and take control of the situation or even ask for the discussion to stop for the time being but you must be thinking that in the lok sabha or the rajya sabha the speaker or the chairman is the presiding officer and they are supposed to maintain the decorum of the house so why should someone listen to the prime minister it is because the prime minister is such a huge post in the country that out of respect for the chair even the opposition and other parties who are not in the majority party will listen to the prime minister other than this in the lok sabha the majority party is the party of the prime minister so they will obviously listen to the orders of the prime minister sometimes the work of certain ministers might also be scrutinized or criticized in the parliament and if that is taken to such an extent where the situation is getting out of control the prime minister will have to intervene and again take control of the situation so the prime minister saves the ministers from any unpleasant situation in the house now let us recap the relation of the prime minister to the parliament so the prime minister advises the president to summon and prorogue the parliament and dissolve the lok sabha the prime minister makes important announcements and defends the government in the parliament since he is the head of the government the prime minister has been given this responsibility thirdly the prime minister saves the ministers from any unpleasant situation in the house the prime minister is the real head of the nation and as such he represents the nation so now we'll talk about the prime minister as the leader of the nation when you know that you are in a position of power and so many people look up to you you have to make sure that you carry out all your responsibilities efficiently and take each step carefully just like that the prime minister has to make sure that he is efficient and responsible to the people of the country 
so the nation looks up to the prime minister for his leadership and views let us see a video where a former prime minister indira gandhi is giving a speech from that you can understand how the people of the country look up to the prime minister भाइयों और बहनों पिछले दफे जब इसी जगह में आपके सामने खड़ी थी वो इसलिए नहीं है कि उनको केवल ये परवाह है कि पाकिस्तान में क्या हो रहा है शायद वो भी हो सकता है लेकिन ये परवाह है कि क्यों ये दबा हुआ देश चाहे हम कमजोर है हमारी फौजें इतनी नहीं है कि जो जो दुनिया के बहुत बड़े बड़े जो शक्तियाँ हैं जो यूरोप के देशों को भी हिला देती है The face of the prime minister is considered synonymous to the representative of the country. We recognize the country as under the leadership of the prime minister. In India, we have had several charismatic leaders who have become the prime minister, such as Jawaharlal Nehru, Indira Gandhi, or Narendra Modi. These people. have an aura or charisma which makes the people of the country look up to them and consider them as the true representative of the country as such in the general elections it is generally the face of this one person that is the prime minister looking at which the people vote so in the general elections it is usually the prime minister for or against whom the people vote So how is the prime minister the leader of the nation the nation looks up to the prime minister for leadership and his views and in the general election it is usually the prime minister for or against whom the people of the country vote now we know that the party or the coalition which gets majority support in the lok sabha election becomes the ruling party and the ruling party chooses their leader as the prime minister of the country so the prime minister has very deep relations with his party now we'll talk about the prime minister in relation to his party so the prime minister has to strengthen and keep the party together since he's the leader of his party or the coalition party he has to make sure that he is in good terms with all his party members Since the prime minister is from a specific party he is the representative of that party to the country so he has to make sure that his party is organized at the local state or national level the prime minister keeps check on the party organization at all levels and keeps good relations with his party men in the parliament as the strength of the party lies in its mass base So since the behavior of his party members determines whether the prime minister will be complimented or insulted he has to make sure that his party men are kept in the best of behavior which is why he has to be in good relations with all of his party men Do you know that the NDA government of Atal Bihari Vajpayee fell in 1999 for the want of just a single vote So when Atal Bihari Vajpayee was the president there was a coalition government and one of the parties of this coalition the AIA DMK withdrew its support the AIA DMK's general secretary was Jayalalitha and due to the withdrawal of this support the prime minister and his government lost the majority support in the Lok Sabha so his government along with all the cabinet ministers had to resign 13 months after he took oath as the prime minister of the country so as you can see the prime minister has to keep all of his party men happy and satisfied and has to strengthen his party otherwise he may lose majority in the lok sabha so what is the relation of the prime minister to his party the prime minister has to strengthen and keep the party together and the prime minister keeps check on the party organization at all levels and keeps good relations with his party men the prime minister of india is the true representative of the country 
he is the most important man in the country and the country in the international sphere is known by the face of the prime minister so the prime minister represents india in international conferences such as the un conference or the meeting of several other bodies the prime minister signs deals and agreements with several international bodies and with foreign nations regarding peace global warming security and several other issues the parliamentary form of government is often known as the prime ministerial government can you imagine why that is so it is because the prime minister is the chosen leader of the country and all the people of the country together elect the party whose leader becomes the prime minister so the prime minister becomes the face which represents the nation the prime minister is the most important man of the nation and the country is seen to be run under his name he has a position of lot of prestige and power the power and prestige of the prime minister doesn't only stem from him having constitutional powers or constitutionally being the head of the cabinet but it also comes from his personality charisma and leadership skills so in india we have had various magnetic personalities as the prime ministers such as jawahar lal nehru indira gandhi or atal bihari vajpayee look at this cartoon can you identify who this is doesn't she look like the former prime minister indira gandhi in this cartoon what the cartoonist wanted to show is that prime minister often dominates the cabinet and becomes almost dictatorial however this allegation is not completely true because to check over the powers of the prime minister there is the opposition the media and the public opinion next we'll be talking about all these checks over the powers of the prime minister so the prime minister has lots of responsibility and powers but does that mean that the prime minister can do whatever he wants and whenever he wants that is not so there are certain checks on the authority of the prime minister let us see what these checks are so first we know that the prime minister has to secure the willing cooperation of all important party members as he stays in office as long as he has the support of the majority members of the lok sabha the prime minister stays in power as long as he has the confidence or trust of the majority members of the lok sabha so the prime minister has to secure the willing cooperation of all his party men who will vote for him in the parliament and thus he will be able to stay in the parliament and hold on to his position as the prime minister the second check is that the opposition acts as an important check on the prime minister and are always ready to criticize the government the presence of a strong opposition safeguards the democracy the opposition is always ready to criticize and bring out the failures or shortcomings of the prime minister and if the prime minister knows that he will be questioned by the opposition whenever they get a chance the prime minister will try to be as efficient and responsible while carrying out his duties we know what a coalition is when one single party doesn't get the absolute majority in the general elections two or more parties come together to form the government when there is a coalition there are members from different parties and these different parties have different ideas and ideologies which is why the prime minister has to keep in mind to keep all of these parties satisfied which is a difficult task so when there is a coalition government there are different parties which have different opinions and hence is generally difficult to manage in india we have the freedom of speech and expression one of the fundamental missions of journalism is to bring out the failures or shortcomings of the government so journalists newspaper and public opinion act as a check on the authority of the prime minister so the media brings out the shortcomings of the government and the people of india also have the freedom of speech and expression which is why they can also criticize the government by talking or by writing 
and they can also take out public protests which are peaceful as criticism against any move of the ruling government. So in this video, we learnt how the Prime Minister is the most important person who runs the government of the country and how the Prime Minister has dynamic relations with all other bodies of the government or high dignitaries of the country. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.